I'm Michael West, Technical Product Manager with VMware. In this video, I will demonstrate how to share Kubernetes services across Tanzu Kubernetes clusters and vSphere 7 with Kubernetes supervisor clusters. Let's start with a quick example of how Kubernetes services work within a single cluster. They are an abstraction that provides discovery and routing of underlying pods that make up an application. When a source pod needs to access another pod in the cluster, it does a DNS lookup of the service name and then accesses that service via the cluster IP. Traffic is routed to one of the endpoints for the service. Endpoints are the IPs of the pods associated with the service. The endpoints object is continually updated based on a selector that is defined in the service. What if we want one of the components of our application to run on a separate cluster? We might do this because we want our database to take advantage of the vSphere pod service and run directly on the hypervisor while running the rest of the application in a fully conformant and upstream aligned Kubernetes cluster. In this case, I have moved the web app off of the supervisor cluster and onto the TK cluster. When my pod attempts a DNS lookup based on the name of the service, the query will fail because the scope of the DNS server is the local cluster. How do we make this work? First, we need to provide ingress to the service on the supervisor cluster by changing it to type load balancer. This causes NSX to create a virtual server on the existing supervisor load balancer and assign a routable IP to it. We now create a service with the same name on our TK cluster. This service is a selectorless service, meaning it does not provide a way to automatically collect the endpoints that requests should be routed to. We also manually define an endpoint object with the IP of the load balancer service on the supervisor cluster. A call to the local DB service is now routed to the correct load balancer IP. The endpoints object for that service contains the IPs of the pods associated with that service, and traffic is routed to one of those pods. Let's see a simple example of how this works. On our supervisor cluster infrastructure service namespace, I will create a deployment and a load balancer service. This pod runs a web server that echoes a simple response when queried. Our echo server pod is now running and has a load balancer service with an ingress IP assigned. Now I will deploy a pod that can be used to call our echo service and then exec into it. The curl command is used to get information from the pod through the echo service. Both the service and the client are running on the same cluster. I'm now connected to a Tanzu Kubernetes cluster. In order to reach my supervisor-based echo service, I must first create a local selectorless service with an endpoint that contains the IP of the supervisor load balancer virtual server. Let's apply the YAML to create the service and notice that this local service has the correct endpoint. We will now create the test pod in the front end service namespace of the TK cluster and jump into it. Notice that the curl command refers to the local service by including service name dot namespace dot svc dot cluster dot local, referring to that local service that we created. And we see that the results are returned from the pod on our supervisor cluster. Now let's expand this to a more complex application. This microservice application represents an online fitness store and consists of a set of services that each have a database and a front-end application component. We want to move those front-end components to a TK cluster and run the data caches as vSphere pods deployed directly on the hypervisor through the supervisor cluster. Just like in the previous demo, we create local selectorless services for each of the data caches and add the local load balancer endpoints for the corresponding services on the supervisor cluster. OK, let's take a look. I set my context to the distributed ACME fit namespace on the supervisor cluster. kubectl get all 
shows that I have five deployments that encompass each of my data caches, along with corresponding services of type load balancer. This is the same setup we had for the Echo server example. From vCenter, we can see that the database pods are running as vSphere pods and are isolated into the distributed Acme Fit namespace. Now from the TK cluster, this is a list of all of the non-database pods and services that make up the application. This is one of the local selectorless services that points to the load balancer of the database running on the supervisor cluster. We will now create the local service for each of the databases. The front end service is a load balancer service running locally on the TK cluster and is the UI for our application. Let's see what it looks like. We log in and are authenticated via the user service. The catalog service provides a list of items and product images. Items are added to the cart via the cart service and then managed through the order service. Cross-cluster infrastructure services with vSphere 7 with Kubernetes. Thank you.